Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Lucky's Garage. Um, I think in the last video, you guys probably spotted how I had uh, pulled the harness out of this Jeep Wrangler. I've cleaned up the firewall. I'm waiting for actual paint. I'm going to pull the hood off and shoot that disassembled. But um, now I have moved to the inside of the car. Um, so a lot of those harnesses go into the car. This thing has an aftermarket stereo and uh, that harness is burned up, the power, power wire is melted. It could have been just actual heat damage in the engine compartment, maybe it stops at the firewall. We're gonna find that out together. But the main engine control uh, ECM harness or chassis, chassis harness goes through the firewall behind the dashboard. We're gonna get a peek in there right now. So let's get into it. Now I've done hundreds of these Jeeps. Um, Mobile Tech originally was uh, a theft repair company, me. I just went to dealerships and body shops and did theft repairs, overhauled steering columns. If a vehicle was hit in the A pillar right here, they need the whole instrument panel removed. So I would go there, take out the whole instrument panel, remove the wiring harness, they would do all the repairs and I would go back, make sure all the lights were off and everything worked and put it back together. Back in the day when a body man was exactly that, a body man. All right. Cover me, I'm going in. I'm gonna have to kick this thing around a little bit. Probably not a lot you can see under here. We have a gander. Okay, yeah, now we're pretty fortunate, I think. When I pull this out, I will show you guys. Why I think we're fortunate. Okay, come on in, have a peek. So the first thing I see when I get underneath here is something melted behind the gas pedal on the floor. So that pretty much means there's some sort of damage above the dashboard. Let's see if you can see that. So yeah, something was melting down and dripping down. So yeah, the firewall saw some heat. So the whole instrument panel most likely gonna come out. Um, luckily the battery, the power cable for the stereo uh, no damage on the inside, which does a couple things. It clears that from being part of the damage, even though I'm pretty confident we found the damage or found what caused it. But that uh, there's no burnt wire in here for the stereo. Chances are the stereo is okay. And um, it wasn't the cause of the fire. I'm going to just look up here. See if I can see anything melted up there. And I kind of don't. So maybe, yeah. So the idea of doing electrical repair is not to just swap out the wiring harness and call it a day. It is to put the car back in uh, pre-accident or pre-fire condition. So I can see already that some of the adhesive panel bond that they use to put the cowl, the lower cowl in, and seal the passenger compartment from the engine compartment, had seen a bunch of heat and, and sweat it out. So I'm gonna dig that out and use panel bond on that. I'm going to uh, take the upper cowl off. I think the wiper motor's in there. See if there's any damage done to that, in addition to taking out most of the dash and verifying that no heat got behind, say, any of the AC vents or heater ducts or defrost vents or anything like that because uh, you get it all done and put it together and the customer's gonna call you back with, hey, my defrost doesn't work. When in reality, it works fine, but the heat got in there and melted all the cowling and ducts and it's pointing in a different direction. So to avoid that phone call and make sure the customer's happy, I'll check that before this thing leaves.
We have a special guest today. Guess who it is? Guess. You got nothing? It's Mark from Gas Rats Customs. What's up, everybody? What's going on, dude? Uh, fire prevention after the fact. Okay. Yeah, I saw your first video. Did you see that? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what the issues were. And it was this guy in here, huh? The compressor? Well, not the compressor, but the wiring. The wiring. And it looked like the kit is manufactured specifically like that, so... Yeah, like, but your tip was the fuse was over here. Yeah, but, not but, but the harness is kind of made that way, so when you get it, you're like, oh, this is how it goes. Yeah. But whoever designed that, I would suggest they redesign it so that it uh, doesn't make it... It appeared to be appear installed correctly. To put a fuse and long wire exactly. and reaching it. Yeah. Cool. But I, I've never seen the kit. It's possible that the kit had O-rings on one side, maybe somebody laid the harness in here backwards. Yeah. But uh, it looks like it was a design kind of. I know they work great, but. Dude, so this is the new harness already? New harness already installed. Yeah. Wow. I'll be down this road a time or two. painted yep so I took the ECU out and sent it to a friend of mine who rebuilt them and he plugged it in and tested everything made sure everything's good did some repairs um, it just goes to I mean it's like it was no surprise all the harness right here has all the sensors from the motor and everything and this is actually the harness that plugs directly in to the ECU so if they all stick together all welded and melted together more than five volts and more than, you know, who knows how many volts will be 
spike to all kinds of sensors that are designed to receive anything but but that type of voltage. So he said there was some minor damage inside there, not the major. Uh, very reasonable on the price, and I'd rather be safe. And so I put the whole thing together, turn the key on, and find out the gas gauge is pegged forever, and the you know instrument panels burnt. But uh, he says it should be fine. It all checked out, and we're going to start it up. I think right now. Really? I think right now is the time to start it up. Oh no, we got one more thing to do. I know the windshield wiper harness. Everything's painted back here and put together. Is there any pink damage? No pink damage. It can't be rubbed out. Nothing's melted here. Nice and clean. So this goes right into that seal. Down. That's a good sound, huh? Yeah. yeah. Switch. <clears throat> I can see a little discoloration in the front. I can do a little paint correction. That means wash with Ajax. Good to go. Okay, there's a little tiny spark, which is generally like a, a lithium chip or some sort of backup power supply. It only does it once. And uh, that's good. So I'm going to plug into the OBD2. I'm going to hop in and have a seat. That's a job all by itself. <laughs> Wait. Is that a picture of the Jeep? That, it is. There's a pre runner bumper. It's a bumper right oh, there. Oh, that's cool, dude. Alright, oh wow. For a camera? Right. You smell that? No. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> okay. I've not used this thing in a while.
You want to talk about turning radius? It's, it's, it's kind of fun. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Very cool. But the fact that it's running, it's charging. Uh, a little bit. S yeah, I mean, yeah, that smoke in the engine bay is probably just fire extinguisher and grease. So, um, yeah, I think we're good. So, uh, I'm going to start putting this thing back together moving it down the road. Hey, thanks a lot for watching, you guys. I appreciate it. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, follow my buddy Mark Gas Rats, Gas Rats Customs on Instagram. He has a lot of behind the scenes stuff, if you know what I mean. Stuff that I can't actually post on my Um That's it. If you have a Jeep and you see smoke, shout me a holla. See you guys, stay safe.